I feel the liftoff. The clock has started. Roger. Everyone and welcome to another episode of the Punk Rocker Moon Stomper podcast. And I said it right this time you on did. my Good first job. try. Uh, I am Amy with you, and as always with me is uh, go ahead. I'm Jason McClellan, <laughs> and yeah, I'm always excited to hear if you get the show right because in my head I'm always worried I'm not going to remember it too because it's such a long, ridiculous title. But that's why we love it. It is. It is. But it's fitting. It's the most like I like a title that tells you exactly what you're getting into. That's right. It's descriptive, but still fun. That's right. Yeah. So people know what they're getting themselves into. Plus, we throw in a little extra, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, speaking of extra, actually, this has nothing to do with extra, but I am dying to open a beer right now. All it's right. It's one of those days. Yeah. So, um, so we to open the show, we have to open the beer. So you go first. <laughs> let's, let's, I feel like, I don't know if that'll come over. <laughs> that sounded really good. But All right. What are you drinking? Awesome. I am drinking uh, the Deschutes Obsidian Stout today. I had one of these the other day, and it was delicious, so I went and bought another six-pack. And I like it, too, because it's slightly higher in alcohol volume. Excellent. I yeah. love, love, love Deschutes. It's such a great brewery. They make Feeling such good, good beer. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, and what's uh, I've got go something it. that, uh, you know, is a tie-in to our previous episode, because I mentioned this beer on the previous episode, and it is um, Santan's Brewing, Santan Brewing Company's Moon Juice. They call it a oh, nice. galactic IPA, and it. For those of you watching the video, you can kind of see the can, but it's got this like moon guy on it. Oh, it does too. And, That's awesome. You know, of course, it's it, galactic IPA. Naturally, they use uh, galactic hops, which is a thing. It's like a type of oh, hops yeah. in Australia, I think. But mm -hmm. they describe it as an out of this world IPA crafted with tons of galaxy and Nielsen Savin hops that transcends all earthly pleasures, emitting an aroma of peach, apricot, and tropical fruit. So That sounds amazing. <laughs> it does, but, you know, like descriptions of wine and anything else, it doesn't really taste like that. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, you know... Whenever I see a beer that has, like, peach and apricot, I'm just like, this sounds This sounds like it's going to be, like, a hoppy fruit explosion, like a, like a muffin in my mouth or something. All I can think of is the Tim Hortons muffins. But then it's sort of like, no, this tastes like beer. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like beer. And it's subtle. It's subtle. As you pointed out, I'm typically not an IPA person drinking an yes. IPA today. And I will say, this is an extremely hoppy beer. So, Huh, interesting. Well, yep. cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That was needed. Oh, man. That was needed. Yeah, that's that's definitely needed. All today. right. So rules of the game uh, here. When when we're out of beer, we're out of show. So well, yeah. <laughs> with that, we'll get the show started. And uh, we thought we, today we would go loosely with a theme of legends. So this is our legends episode. And naturally, we'll be talking about many legends through the course of this podcast. But uh we just recently lost a legend, a space legend, and I don't know, I mean, in my opinion, anybody who's been to space is pretty pretty damn legendary. Pretty much a but, legend, yeah. yeah, for sure. But there are some, I still think there are some that kind of stand out even within that elite group of the elite already. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, like, I'm a space historian. I have a deep fondness for the Mercury astronauts, and um, we, uh, I guess, yeah, I should break it. Uh, we lost John Glenn yesterday. Um, he was 95. He had been, I didn't realize, he'd actually been in hospital for a week. Um, oh. And because I hadn't actually been following the news super closely, I was sort of vaguely aware of it, I didn't realize he was actually in a cancer hospital. Mm. So all the signs were kind of there, not to mention 95. Um, but yeah, we, we lost John Glenn around like 1 o'clock Pacific time yesterday. I was out to lunch actually with another legend. Um, do you know John Logston at all? I don't. Have you come across him? He's like... He's been writing space policy since there was space that needed policy to be written about it. He's That's like amazing. Just he's like the guy who does space policy. Yeah. He's been doing it forever. Um, and he's awesome. And we went out to lunch because he was in Pasadena for a meeting. And then he got a text from his wife saying that John Glenn had passed. I was oh. like, oh, wow. Oh. And we both got really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, John Glenn is I, I um, 
I mean, he's, it's kind of odd when you like have these heroes that you look up to, these legends that you feel somewhat close to in a way, quote unquote air quotes, um, when you've never met them. Like I never yeah. met John Glenn. Uh, did you ever meet John Glenn? No, like, never had the chance. He stopped going to events and stuff years ago, I think, and sort of, you know, only the big ones. But um, yeah, it's just sort of, but you do sort of feel that loss. And for me, it's like he was, he's this, this archetypal astronaut from the 60s that we just don't see anymore yeah. of this like this man was as american as apple pie and like as cliche as you want to get like he had the he was this like young good looking protestant male with a beautiful wife two children and i think they might have had a dog at one point and like i don't know if they had a picket fence around the house but i wouldn't they be surprised yeah. yeah like war hero um first american in orbit like public servant all the way through like he was just a good human yeah. and like that's such an interesting rare breed but um yeah i don't know it just it made me when i was driving home from that lunch i was just thinking about like that's a legend that's that's like a very specific kind of legend um yeah and it was interesting because it was i think it was the same week um early earlier in the week we heard that uh buzz aldrin had been taken to a yeah. hospital and then airlifted from the South Pole yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then then hearing about John Glenn, it was just kind of a kind of sad, depressing, bad health week yeah, for space. For the, the space world. Yeah. Um I haven't heard what's going on with Buzz. I haven't heard, heard anything report. more. I've seen some photos yeah. that, you know, he's posted. He's he's big big on social media, so he's always posting, you know, yeah. people are posting Buzz, for him. But. <laughs> Buzz is a legend of a different kind, I think. I um I was talking to my friend Francis at the San Diego Air and Space Museum. Who, you know, when you when you work in that kind of thing when you have to put up press releases, like they of course have the obituaries for these guys like lined up ready to go, which is so creepy and morbid, but I get it. Um and yeah, he was just telling he was telling me that like writing buzzes was really hard because like he's such an odd figure that like no one really knows what to say about him. Like I've met Buzz. Have you met Buzz? No. Oh, you have. I don't even know if I'd recommend it. Like <laughs> I've been at events with Buzz and like not talked to him mm -hmm. because I just don't know what to say to this man who's like not totally right. Yeah. Like it's really it's really sad and weird. Um you know, he's, his face is made of plastic. His wife is made of plastic. <laughs> he's just wearing all this, like, gaudy gold jewelry, yelling about going to Mars. But, like, he right? I mean, it, it, anytime <laughs> I see his photos, he reminds me of my grandpa because, like, he's always in the same shirt and always wearing his mm -hmm. suspenders. So he's got his get your ass to Mars shirt or whatever and the always. suspenders. It's the same shirt and the same suspenders, the same outfit day in, yeah. day out. <laughs> yep. He's got the same, just repeats the same lines and like, uh, yeah, he's just, you know, it's natural as you get older that you slow down a bit. It, you know, I've, you meet these old guys, these old heroes that like they still know what they did. They still know like the technical details of like systems they worked on. It just takes them a bit longer to like remember the details, yeah. but they're there. Buzz seems to be having never actually seen him speak, but have heard about like, even recently it was the Gemini 12 50th anniversary. And apparently he and Jim Lovell were up there and like everybody was just like felt awkward on behalf of Buzz oh, because man. every time he had to like stop and search for something, he would just like fill it with words. Wow. And it's just like, I like, I've, I've, I've met Jim Lovell. I've seen him speak. He's just like this quiet dignity of like a lovely older man. Yeah. And then next to, the insanity of buzz i'm like this is just weird this is just too weird so legends <laughs> legends yeah you know and, you and uh... talking about age i mean you know it's it's expected that these space legends these pioneers of space are, are going to start yeah. dropping like flies as sad as it is because they're old you know there's yeah. no no denying that and it's just remarkable to think going back to john glenn like how old he was the last time he went into space. Yeah. He was in his 70s, 77. right? 77. 77. And that's remarkable. And, you like, know, a space legend um, who I have met, um, Story Musgrave, you know, oh up God. up until, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, story's another story, but uh, <laughs> up until. It's full of stories. <laughs> up until John Glenn, um, you know, Story had held the, the record for oldest person in space right. or whatever. So. 77. I mean, that's old. And then thinking about 77 in space. And 
I don't really know the, all the operations that take place in space aboard a spacecraft, but I don't imagine they have room just for you know people to be bumming a ride. Like I imagine you have your job and you have to do it. So yeah, can't really be dead weight in space. I think he has to, had to have had his job and he did his job. He had the the mental capacity. His facilities were there that he was able to yeah. still perform the way an astronaut needs to perform, and that's incredible. And I have no idea what that job was. I actually haven't ever gone into like what his role on that mission was. Yeah. Um, but then, but it, as you're saying that, I'm remembering that like space tourism is a thing. And there's like a couple of billionaires who have trained to go up in space. And I don't know what they did. Like, what did they contribute aside from money? Like, well, space tourism is certainly something we're going to talk a lot about on this podcast. Yes. Um, it's something that I'm super excited about. And we have some friends who have been personally involved in one way or another in that whole mess, that fun mess. So we'll talk more about it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I would like to know a lot more about, you know, space travel and what's involved in that, um, you know, because as you mentioned, the billionaires going to space, like, what all do they do except contribute Funsies? money yeah yeah i don't know and i think it's i mean it's definitely got to be different if you're on a nasa mission i would think so versus a private mission so okay i met this billionaire once best lead in um but i met this billionaire once at an event he bought all the seats i think there's six seats on the second virgin galactic flight mm -hmm. which of course is not a thing that exists yet right and the first and flight has been is delayed Richard and delayed family. and delayed yeah because of death and all the bad things. Yes. But um, this guy this guy has bought all the seats. Uh, one is for him. One is for Buzz Aldrin, hmm. who is going to officiate the marriage in space wow. between this guy and the woman that he does not know yet because he's still looking for that wife, <laughs> plus three witnesses. Wow. So this is what billionaires contribute to space tourism. A crap ton of money to do ridiculous things like get married in space. Well, you know, I'd I'd volunteer. I, I would get married <laughs> just for the hell of it for that and then get a divorce, but it'd be worth it. And then be and then this it. led into the very interesting conversation with uh Fred Hayes, who is of course uh who played him in Apollo thirteen? Bill Paxton? Bill Paxton. Okay. Real Bill Paxton, as I call him, to people who are not familiar with the missions. But I, I happened to have that conversation um, with this weird billionaire right in front of Fred Hayes. And then Fred Hayes and I got into a conversation about the legalities of space marriage. Like, who fun. was like, what That's fun. date? Wow. That was actually, like, really, really funny. Because Fred, Fred Hayes, I've met at various events and stuff. And, like, he's the nicest guy. He's just, like, super chill and unassuming. And, like, everyone knows who he is because of Apollo 13. But he's not, like, the sought-after guy like Jim Lovell. Yeah. Like, you want everybody lines up for Jim Lovell. No one lines up for Fred Hayes. And Fred Aww. Hayes is the most, like, come hang out. He's just, like, he's such a doll. Um, but, yeah, we had this very interesting conversation of, like, does the state from which you launch – is that where your marriage is done legalized? Yeah. Like, yeah, how does that work? How does it work when you get married at sea? I don't know. Yeah. But I imagine it's similar, I guess. I don't know. Space law is something I find incredibly fascinating. It and is weird that it's a thing that has to exist. Yeah. Kind of awesome. It exists and yet it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the, I describe it as the Wild West. De the sp space is definitely the Wild West when it comes to yeah. any sort of law. Like, there is some law that exists. It's it's in place. It's actually a thing. But it's not but recognized like, by everybody who enforces it. Uh, it's so, it's such a mess. Such a mess. And also, like, what are the technologies? Like, there's all kinds of laws for, like, who owns the moon, even though, like, we don't have the technology to do anything on the moon beyond, right. like, go to it and rove it. So, like, all of these, there's all kinds of weird space laws that exist that, like, we have no reason to have them exist yet anyways. We'll have to. Which is kind of fun. We'll definitely we have, have some conversations about that. Species. Oh, yeah. No, and they're yeah. so weird. And, you know, people like right, Robert, Robert Bigelow have, you know, really been pushing and trying to get things uh, cleared up and changed and put in place because mm. he's, you know, very close to having property on the moon. Right. And... You know, as it stands now with the weird, really bad laws that are in place, um, there's no incentive for rich billionaires like himself to put up the money and, you know, take the risk and put these things on, on the moon or any other body. Because right now, the way the law is written, and we're talking about, uh, what is it, the, the Space Treaty or Outer Space, whatever it is, long name forget yeah. what it is now, but um, 
and there's a second one that's not really observed by anybody except a handful of countries pertaining to the moon. But uh, ultimately, any property, any structure that's built in space, uh, you don't really get to own like you would own a house yeah. here. Like it belongs to everybody. So if somebody else, another country or whatever, an alien, whoever wants, came to the moon, if that's where your, your little hut is, um, you have to open the door and let them in. Because yeah. that's what the law says. It belongs to them, too. You have to make it available to them for their use, too. Huh. Like, why are you going to do that if you're a billionaire who spent the money to go up there and, you know, you've only got a finite number of resources, you know, if you only got a little bit of food or something for the two yeah. guys living in this hut. Oh, well, this guy from Russia wants to come in. You got to let him in. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. ridiculous. You have to be and very uh, the whole philanthropic. Thing with, yes. Yeah. That's the whole thing, the way it's written. It's like this whole, like, lovey-dovey we all hold hands and everybody's friends um, with space mining. <laughs> and, there's, and, and there's rainbows and everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah with, with space mining. I mean, that's a big mess too. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going yeah. forward with it, even though that there are these laws and they're trying to get them changed, but nobody cares because who's going to enforce these laws and they're not really recognized yeah. by everybody. But it's, you know, any resources you mine have to be used for the benefit of all humanity. What does that mean? You know? Yeah. What does that mean? Yep. Yeah, how how would you define the benefit of humanity? Because I, I mean, feel like a billion a billionaire's description or definition of what benefits humanity is going to be very different from like some. I built a big hotel that that's got my help. name on it. Yeah, you know, it looks like, pretty. All of humanity can look and say, "Wow, that's a nice hotel. I wish I could afford yeah. to stay there." That benefits humanity. Yeah, I created jobs for all of these undocumented workers that I will underpay to build my hotel. That's helping humanity. Yep. So it's all subjective. <laughs> it's such a mess, but I yeah. I love it at the same time. It's, it's so yeah. exciting. It's the kind of thing that like it's going to have to evolve. It's going to have to be super fluid like as we actually start mining space if and when in like 50 years we start mining space. Well, like I said, I'm super excited about space law and we'll have to come back and and visit that because there's so many topics within that too. And just a lot of I, I mean a lot of that goes into what we were talking about earlier with space tourism and then we space mining and you know just all these interesting things that are yeah. happening you know may happen in the near future so yeah and i really want to bring in some somebody who actually works in that stuff to talk about it because like i don't even know i don't even know and like i'd love to pick somebody's brain so well, we will amy we will hunt somebody down because some of our upcoming guests you know we won't pin times on them and i won't <laughs> won't name names right now but we actually have somebody who is a friend of the show and will be on the show probably multiple times. Yeah. Who is an old British punk rocker and happens to be on the board of directors for Planetary Resources. I believe that's I the company. I don't think I knew that. Yes. I guess he does know about yes. space law, doesn't he? So he knows well, a little bit about uh, the whole mining thing going on. Yeah. So we'll definitely, right. definitely be talking He's, about that. He does know his rocks. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He is definitely a, a rock star in his own right. So. Yeah, in his own right. Yep. For sure. Well, let's uh, then go ahead and move speaking, into yeah, musicians. Speaking of rock stars. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I think I know, letting you take the lead here, I think I know who you might mention, but uh, uh, who might you group in this category I, of our <laughs> discussion right now of legendary? Because I got so excited and put it all over the internet when this happened like two weeks ago because I got yes. to see Tim Armstrong play <laughs> Operation Ivy with the Interrupters and I was like, four feet away from the stage and when he came into the crowd to like greet people before the show started I oh, like wow. touched his back and then I was like <gasps> which is almost as good as the time the first time I saw the interrupters in May actually he was there because like he produces them right yeah. and he he's I, I've, and he played with them that night as well and uh yeah he like bumped into me in the crowd and it was like awesome <laughs> yeah so I I would 100 percent uh put Tim Armstrong in the category of music legends. I'm like, I know he's not for everybody, but like, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm I just with think you. Like... And he's, he's very um, influential as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's influenced so many bands over the years and worked with so many bands, um, you know, as a, as a musician, but also as a, a producer and a, and a label owner. Um, and just as a friend, I mean, he's got so many friends and friendships he's developed over the years, having been in yeah. the scene for so long. Um, just the, 
breadth of his work too. Yeah, like it goes pretty far, I mean, pretty deep. It goes even just like you know what did what was this? I can't remember he what song it was, but like he won a Grammy for a song that he wrote for Pink. Like you would not put those two people together necessarily, but it's just yeah. like just being able to do all these things in different genres and like also be an artist, like and, just having all of this stuff. You know, kind of, and I know it's amazing. I know it sucks. Um, you know, definitely probably not worth paying the money for Sirius XM, but his show, Tim Time Bomb yeah. Friends, it's on Sirius XM, um, mm-hmm. on on the faction faction channel is kind of incredible um, if you're a Tim Armstrong fan and a fan of, fan of punk music and related genres because um, that's really what the show is. It's Tim Armstrong and, and his life and these relationships yeah. he's built and the musicians he's worked with and his friends, you know, his incredible friends. And they'll come in and, and either have like a themed show where they, they talk about, a, a you know, something specific or just general um, – where people come in and they'll kind of jam together or he'll play songs that they recorded together. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's done stuff like that. We talked about the, the yeah. songs he's done with Pink and other artists and he plays yeah. that too um, and plays different versions of songs that he's cre- he's written for other people, but he plays like right. a version of him playing it, like a stripped down acoustic version of it or something. Yeah. It's really cool. And for, you know, Tim Armstrong fan, it's a, a very geek-tastic show. Yeah, I keep waiting for somebody to rip them all and make a podcast out of it so I can listen to it cuz I'm not going to get Sirius XM. Yeah. Yeah. Meh. But yeah, no yeah, I do no, have like, I, I hear a lot you. of his his like Tim Time Bomb like stuff that he's released. Like it's so good. It's just like it's so different, but it's so good. It's just like, yep. I'm into this. I'm just into all of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't listened to uh, a whole lot of the transplants because, you know, what I have heard, that's not really my jam, but, yeah. you know, it's okay. It's definitely him and, different. and Travis Barker, I, it's different. Um, I kind of love it. Yeah. I don't know. It's, um, transplants is weirdly the, I, I do listen to a fair bit, actually. Um, surprisingly, again, yeah, because it's, it's a lot more, like, hip-hop oriented, yeah. which is yeah. not a genre that I go to at all. Um, but you know what, before, like, driving to the gym for kickboxing, it's, like, really good pump-up music. I get that, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, like, it's it's got its moment, right? It's got that, like, there's a time when that's just, like, really perfect. Um, yeah, I, I had the, this is my, my best transplant story, was I changed a flight to get back from San Francisco in time to see transplants the day before my birthday this year. And I was like, this is my birthday present to myself, going to see them finally, because, like, Again, love Tim Armstrong, love Travis Barker, which yeah. is like, yep, this is totally, totally worth it. Like blasted down from Burbank to Santa Ana, I think it was, or maybe Costa Mesa, somewhere down there. And I got there right in time for Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I just missed them entirely and then ended up at a Snoop Dogg show. It was different. That's fun. It was it was so weird. I don't know. Snoop Dogg is uh not that's like definitely not my jam. Um something a little bit weird too about like a 40 something year old aging rapper on stage with an 18 year old still just wearing a glitter bikini. (laughs) You know, it's interesting, (laughs) you know, thinking back like early days of Warp Tour, um, you know, hip hop and, and, and punk have, for whatever reason have kind of gone together. Um, the audiences have been a little, little similar, um, in some circles, but yeah, early, early Warp, you know, 97, 98, I remember um, you'd have interesting uh, people on the on the lineup, like Eminem. Saw Eminem. Really? And people weren't having that. I'll let you know. In, in Phoenix, <laughs> I think it was '97. Um, yeah. Man, people did not want Eminem there, and I was kind of early in in his career, but uh, yeah, it was funny because you've got thousands of punks, and I forget who was playing next, but it was some big band like bad religion or something it was yeah. coming up next yeah. and they had the, the two main stages like side by side and then was mm-hmm. playing on on the left one and i was standing in front of the main one with like everybody else and you know you see there he's like, my name is my name is my name is and, and then everybody goes fuck you ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome it was good and, and sad, I, I think that was the same awesome. same warp that uh, i think i think either ice t or ice cube was there so that, that was fun too. Stuff. Yeah. But yeah, no good times. Yeah. You know, that stuff went together and you know, I 
would have never seen them otherwise, but yeah, I get to say I've seen them now. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. Sometimes it's one of those things where like, you don't really expect to see something and then it's there. And then you're like, well, that happened. Yeah. So I'll go with it. Blink-182. It was amazing. The last time I saw, well, not the last time, the second to last time I saw Blink-182. So I'm in LA and they played a a smaller show at the, the Wiltern theater and they like bring the, weirdest people on stage with them just whoever I feel like they just friends. know everybody they know everybody and of course everybody there wants are, to go on stage with Blink-182 yeah that I would definitely classify as legends yeah. in their own in their own right but go on who yeah. did they like pull so out the in, woodwork in LA they brought um, LL Cool J so <laughs> LL Cool J was there I would never there. I put those two things amazing. together yeah so that was Weird. that was pretty exciting yeah. Weird. yeah it's weird yeah they have interesting people they bring out but yeah, I mean, you know, Tom DeLonge is somebody I'll throw in there as legendary and, you know, he has a special place in my heart because yeah. he's kind of a been, been an inspiration for me, not only as a musician, but as an entrepreneur. Like mm-hmm. he's always had the entrepreneurial spirit, spirit and as he's like grown and matured a little bit, Tom DeLonge and maturity, I don't think ever go together. Um, I don't think he would want that to go together, but, you know, he's always just had businesses in mind he's always wanted to do things that make him happy so that's been the the motivation behind all of his you know clothing companies and shoe companies and technology companies and everything and he's just done it um and his current company to the stars i of course love the name love the logo and yeah doing all sorts of stuff doing things that he's always wanted to do publishing books publishing comic books and working on feature films and tv shows and all sorts of fun stuff so yeah but yeah, his bands, and... I've I've loved all of his yeah. bands too. I mean, Blink, you know, always will love Blink. Um, but Angels and Airwaves, love Angels and Airwaves. Boxcar Racer was fantastic. And he's even I hinted that Boxcar he's going Racer to right get that back together perhaps. Really? Yeah. Huh. How many bands is Travis Barker in right now? Uh, too many. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel I don't like know half if he knows. the bands we've talked about in the last like 10 minutes have yes. included Travis Barker. <laughs> yes. And how, how does he have that much time? What else is he doing? I'd nothing else. I mean, that's true. He's not doing anything else. But uh, yeah. Have you have you been to his restaurant? Crossroads? I have not. I have I not. I really want to um, go. I really want to go. A friend of mine. It's it is it's vegan. It's He's vegan, vegan yeah. right? Yeah. Um, because one of my very dear friends, um is no knows them because he's he puts on shows all over everywhere and he just knows everybody it's very weird walking down the street with him in vegas at punk rock bowling when like somebody stops and is like eddie i haven't seen you in ages and it's like you know one of the guys from bad religion it's just like this is weird i feel weird yeah <laughs> We're just like, standing there being like you do your thing you'd be awesome um <laughs> but yeah no he he is uh he's on a mission to make me like va- uh, vegan cheese which I've said this before, and I will say it again. The one thing I just can't do is vegan cheese because well, I love cheese. <laughs> I'll tell you this, <laughs> but Amy. But I, I hear. I'll this tell is you this. Ed, yeah. So you are right. And, you know, the the vegan cheese that's predominantly adopted, like, by restaurants and stuff because it's, like, the biggest company, easy easiest to get is, like, the Daya cheese or whatever. Yeah. So any place that, like, is a pizza joint and they'll do, like, a vegan cheese, right. that's what they have. Right. And the reason that one's taken off so it's been adopted so well is because it actually like melts and stretches. And so it, mm-hmm. you know, seems to be like real cheese. Um, yeah. I will say that after so many years of, you know, having it kind of like getting less weirded out by it, but yeah, it's, it's not great cheese. So yeah. there are companies, but little caveat here, they have a mac and cheese, Daya does, mm-hmm. a mac and cheese. Mm. And the cheese that comes in it is like a packet of like the golden liquid cheese, you know, like Velveeta or whatever. Oh yeah, um, that's, that's actually not good. Real cheese. Like, that's let's actually be, good. Let's it's just all, all delicious chemicals. Yeah, absolutely. So that works, and yeah. you know, I'm a mac okay, and, I big mac that. and cheese fan, and you know, I make amazing mac and cheese. So let's that just, let's just... that is a base. <laughs> That, that Let's works. put on the record that uh, mac and cheese is legendary legendary in its own right as well. <laughs> That's why we're talking about mac and cheese, because this is our legendary <laughs> it's episode. Also a legend. That's right. Yeah, no. Um, so that's yeah, my secret not... for making vegan mac and cheese is starting with right. the Daya because they've got that like liquid huh. cheese. Um, there's another company, and I forget the name, but they also have this like liquid nacho cheese type thing. And I discovered it at the, the vegan, uh, the LA Vegan uh, Beer Fest 
Beer and Food Fest, which is an mm-hmm. amazing thing. So many vendors there and just lots of stuff to go around and try. Like you get unlimited beer, which is always fun. Uh, but also like all these food vendors and a lot of different cheese vendors. So um, that was good to try. But you are right. I mean, it's really difficult to find good vegan cheese. It does exist. And usually it's yeah. at places that make their own. And right. I've experimented with that a little bit um, with some I success. I when I, with some when success. I looked up your your personal youtube channel the other day so um, yeah something yeah. like a, a, a dill havarti um that one actually came out well as well as like a smoked gouda you know smoked mm-hmm. gouda is my favorite cheese in the world so when i saw that and thought that i could make a vegan version of that i was skeptical um yeah. it came out okay but i definitely need to practice with it but yeah we've got a there's a there's a cookbook and i'm sure there are many yeah. but there's a cookbook that is all about vegan cheeses so it's mm. kind of fun it's yeah, time consuming nice. for sure but uh how it, long does it take to make vegan cheese? Oh, just a day. I mean, well, <laughs> actually like day. like three days probably. I think you have to like let it sit and the longer it sits, the better. Right, but, right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you like th- cook some stuff on the stove. You end up throwing it in a blender or whatever. You pour it in a, yeah. in a mold and stick it in the fridge. Or just um, let it... Let it sit there, it kind of hardens up, and you, yeah. like, you have to wrap it in a cheesecloth or a, yeah. a paper towel or whatever because it yeah. soaks up the moisture, and then after right. a while, you take it out of that. And Yeah, so it's a little bit of a process, but it's pretty quick. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, Worth yeah. the experimentation if you've got the time, and I need to get yeah, around to doing that again. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess if you've got the time and don't have the cheese options, then go for it because cheese makes cheese, everything yes, better. Yes, it does. <sighs> Yeah, I do love cheese. I've gone on the record saying that I love cheese. It's like, I feel like Liz Lemon is my spirit animal, if nothing else, because of the night cheese. Like, I would like to sit around all night and just eat cheese. <laughs> I don't know. If, I, mean, I would imagine they have it at Crossroads, and I'd be curious to see what they what they do. Yeah. Because I've I, heard um, the food there is pretty epic. I've Yeah, I've heard. I mean, this is, this is back to my friend Eddie whenever he's, like, coming to L.A. He, there's apparently a vegan cheese restaurant or a vegan cheese shop in L.A. Mm. Um, that makes the best cheese. Um, so I want to go there. And then we've also discussed that we should eat at Travis's restaurant because apparently it is fantastic and they do everything vegan very well. Because yeah. um, I've had some, I mean, I've had some vegan food. Like I weirdly know a lot of vegans. Um, and so whenever we go out, it's always a vegan place. And I've had some vegan food that's like really really great and even without the cheese i know i'm so cheese motivated right now i get but, um, it i get it but even you're like, in a you're in a great you know, city for it so much great vegan food there pizza. yeah 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 i know i've never thought about being vegan i really admire people who can who can do that well maybe we'll we'll do an episode where we'll go and and try vegan cheeses in la that'll be fun oh that would be really fun you don't have to twist my arm <laughs> yeah, and then that's probably like one of the only ways that I will ever go into a vegan cheese shop. To be yeah. totally honest, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. No, it's cheese, fascinating it's these like, these uh, little shops that are popping up and companies that mm-hmm. are doing this. Um, you know, very niche thing. There are there are vegan butcher shops. <laughs> you know these companies what, like that, what is a what is a vegan butchering like i'm gonna butcher the hell out of this tomato and like yep. oh i'll have a hind quarter tomato like be kind of awesome the stabbing of a tomato and yeah uh, i mean it does bleed of yeah. sorts no it's uh <laughs> it's just uh co- companies that make you know their own fake meat meat products right 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 so, yeah there's no butchering taking place so it's weird that they call them that but figure out fake meat like i know it's soy protein or whatever it is but like no, all sorts of different meat, types so, but, um, so i'm a i'm a vegetarian because i can't stand the consistency of meat like mm-hmm. chewing something that like bounces back freaks me out mm. like i can't do gummy bears or gummy worms either um so the idea of like Can replicating... you do mushrooms yeah mushrooms really? don't bother me mm, okay. yes i don't know I, I know i know mushrooms are like a weird contentious yeah. fungus for people but like yeah. i love mushrooms because when you but i can also do seafood mm-hmm. but not anything like calamari that has that like bouncy consistency yeah. so just like i get i can never really get behind the vegan meat that's mm. trying to replicate the consistency of meat meat because I'm like, this is just worse because it doesn't really have a taste, but it also has that horrible, like, bouncy consistency of flesh. I'm just like, this is just freaking me out. Well, a lot that's, of them don't actually pull yeah. that element off, so you might be okay with some of it. Yeah. But... <laughs> Mo- most of it is fine. There's, yeah. a, there's a restaurant near me um, that has a vegan chicken that is just, like, too too chewy, and I just don't understand it. I can't get hmm. it. Why? Like, if you're vegan, you love animals and you don't want to, you don't want to hurt them. So why do you want to pretend like you're eating them? 
it's not pretending like you're hurting them. It's just, you know, a, a fam- yeah. familiar thing, I think. A familiar thing. Know. I get maybe it's maybe it's familiarity, but yeah. um And it yeah. also makes it more more or I guess less weird for anybody else who is looking for alternatives and yeah. they're all oh, think- hey, that's like chicken. I know chicken. Yeah. So. I, I think part of it is probably too like, oh, if you're like eating dinner with a vegan you can go someplace and eat right. something that's not going to freak you out yeah. um no I'm, it, I'm a big fan of it like i don't have a problem with it yeah. because like it makes it easy for me because i know what i like so like a couple nights ago i made sweet and sour pork because mm. um gardein has a sweet and sour pork um so they got these little cubes of pork um yeah yeah and a, and a sweet and sour sauce so just throw that into your all your vegetables and it's deliciously amazing that really doesn't sound bad. Yeah. And I make fish tacos with Gardein's fish. They're fake fish. I've never um, had fake fish. So Gardein does a really good job with their, their little mm. f- fillets. So they do fantastic in fish tacos. Yeah. Um, oddly, like a lot of the, I mean, it doesn't really taste like fish. And most fake fish doesn't. It tastes like yeah. chicken. Yeah. Um, and it's probably the same stuff they use for their chicken, <laughs> their fake chicken. Um, yep. the, the weirdest thing. Okay. So there is vegan tuna and that sort of kind of is like tuna. Huh. Um, and vegan shrimp, oddly, is very shrimp-like. Do they look like shrimp? They, they do. Kind of. Kind of. Like so in the consistency weird. is really weird. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's very shrimpy. It's kind of weird odd yeah when was the last time you had shrimp though Mm -hmm. when when was the last time you had shrimp that you remember what it tastes like not that long ago okay yeah yeah not that long ago uh i would say a decade or so maybe more i don't know yeah but yeah no i definitely definitely remember the tastes and textures of everything so that makes it great for me as as a cook to you know create everything that i love right um and you know, there's so many products out there that that that's easy anymore. Like a decade or so ago, it was a little more difficult, but pretty easy now. So, you know, you have people who are vegan for you know they're the the like super healthy vegans, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I'm not that I'm not that vegan. Like I like my fries and everyone's like like gluten free. I like everything fried. Like fried makes everything better. So. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I have a friend who's vegan who puts stuff up of, like, meals he's made on Instagram and always labels it as, like, here's this and, like, lists what the food is and says, and this is how you become a fat ass as a vegan. Yeah. It's just like, yep, because everything is fried and there's just a lot of carbs. Yeah, so, and, like, yep. with all the, the meats and just weird stuff that you can do, like, you know, a lot of it's still, like, weird chemicals and stuff. Like, it's not – vegan doesn't necessarily mean healthy. But, Love me some chemicals. But you know um, what? I mean, one yeah. of my favorite desserts, and I eat too many, but Oreos. Oreos are surprisingly vegan. So Are they vegan? They are vegan. Really? Yeah. I thought they weren't v- – Nope. Huh. Oreos it, are it, a wonderful vegan dessert. I thought there was gelatin in them. No. Because I thought they weren't kosher. Huh. I nope. didn't know. I haven't had an Oreo in ages. Nope. You know when, like, you see that one picture on the internet of, like, somebody opened an Oreo and there's a dead spider in it? Like, yes. That's probably never actually happened, and it's probably well, some fake picture. I assume that's the case like, with, like, that... every food, and I just don't think about it. I mean, that's Ugh. always the best thing is to not think about what you're actually eating. Just. This is definitely true. This is, yeah. And, you know, some of my favorite yeah. restaurants, it's funny because I've noticed this on many occasions that, some of my favorite restaurants, and usually it's like Chinese restaurants, but they get they like fail health inspections and like are always like in the news, <laughs> like oh they got a bad grade in the health inspection. Yeah. Well, well whatever they're doing, keep doing because it makes the food great. Yeah. I Wasn't I there... don't care. I'm not going to think about how filthy it is. It tastes. Oh delicious. my god. I remember reading something about a a Chinese restaurant in New York that had like the kitchen was actually outside in an alleyway. Because they had no space and like they were preparing dumplings outside, <laughs> like with rats running around, and it was like massive health. And I think it was something like I'm Google sure there Earth. There are more, more rats it. inside, but yeah. Probably. But like Google Earth, York. like satellite imagery found this restaurant, and like that's, that's how anybody found out that their kitchen was actually outside in the back. And everyone's like, oh, I love the food so much. Yep. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I try not to think about like food trucks and stuff like it's, you know, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yep. I mean, I and, know. I, you know, yeah. I, I, I just shrug yeah. it off. Like, I know that everything's dirty. Like, that's life. Life is dirty. And mm-hmm. I think about, you know, my own kitchen. You know, I'm certainly not scrubbing the counters every five seconds. And, you know, I'm licking my fingers yeah. while I'm making the food and everything else. Like, It's somehow, like, okay when it's your own germs yeah. no, and your that's, own that, cause, that's like, absolutely true. But. I don't know. I don't know what, like, I don't know why that is. Like, it's still gross. And, like, Pete walks on everything. Pete being my cat right he walks on everything and like if i'm eating grapes and i drop a grape and he rolls on the table where he walks i'm like eh. yeah no i'm, <laughs> I'm the same it. way the like way i look at it like he licks my face all the time yep. so whatever yeah it, it's no, antibodies I mean, it's making me stronger right that's how science works yes everything <laughs> like about you and about where you live it's like total peat contamination so either you're fine with it or you're not and really you just if you're if you're you're not fine with it then you shouldn't have pets that's damn right absolutely yeah no we 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 know that uh you know our dogs like are on every inch of us and every inch of everything we own so you know when it's like we're putting the package of tomatoes away and they like one falls and rolls on the floor and the dog licks it we're all eh, pick it up and put it in the fridge like yeah. yeah You'll but don't worry, friends. If you ever day. come home and I make food for you, I will actually take extra steps to make sure I things do, are clean I'm for you. I'm very aware of like making sure I've like depeated things yeah. before people come over. Like speaking of, there he goes behind me. Um, like I will, I will wipe down the the island and the counters so yeah. that like it's very clear. Like I want people to see. Like not not that I ever have anybody in my house ever, but like the odd time, like once every year and a half that somebody comes over to my house. But just like yo, I've cleaned everything. There's not peat everywhere. Yeah. I've like vacuumed and I've done this and like my Pulled car out the lint roller. <laughs> yeah, I like lint roller all his hair off from like when I drive, he sits in like the middle console and just like leans on me, which means he's like rubbing fur on That's like so the perfect. driver, the yeah. side of like the driver's seat. Yeah. Um, it just like it just gets embedded in the fibers. It's pretty fun. So, but yeah, I try to like de animal my life before people have to engage with it. <laughs> uh, luckily, no one engages in my life, so it's people <laughs> well you know it's funny because i do the same thing but at the same time like that's a really good indicator if those are people who should be over anyway like if they're gonna have a problem with my dogs i'm sorry yeah. i'm sorry that's a, that's a red flag to me i oh, know i don't I need to associate it. with you pete is the best judge of character in that if you don't awesome. like pete uh i don't like your character <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah perfect. i am um, I had some people over from YouTube actually a couple of weeks ago for a meeting. They wanted to see the space that I shoot in and mm-hmm. stuff. And um, the space that I have for meetings is this giant kitchen island. And it's Pete's place where he lies. Because like when I moved into That's this so apartment perfect. and had no furniture, that was all he could do was be up on camera. So I couldn't tell him not to do it. Um, so I've got these three people there. And Pete's like rolling around all over their stuff, like biting them and playing with them. And Pete doesn't cat right. He hisses when he's having a good time. That's funny. So if he starts, that's the weirdest you, thing about cats. So like you need an introduction for cats. This is why, yeah. like, you know, I'm out of practice with cats. Like I, I told you before, I grew up with cats and love cats, and always thought I was a cat person until I found my little dogs who were like cats. But every cat, yeah. all animals are individual. They're all individually different and have their weird characteristics. But cats, especially, like, you always have to give people an introduction to the cat to explain these weird behaviors because every cat is so different and that's why my wife is like she hasn't really warmed up to cats because she hasn't spent a lot of time around cats right the few she has she really loves and she's a total animal person so she really wants to but she's kind of weirded out by how some cats like you know will be purring and then all of a sudden swat at you (laughs) and then other cats yeah yeah. just like the differences cats are so fascinating yeah it took me yeah and for the record pete is a legend um (laughs) yeah pete is um, a legend Pete is a legend i love that i love that pete's like in my imdb page which i didn't even know i had until recently but like there's an imdb page for me it says my name and then mentions pete and then mentions all the shows that i've done interviews in. i'm surprised you haven't made a, a twitter account for pete it's because then that's one more thing to maintain. I know, right? What I should Adding do is the, the Instagram. I know. I already like can't manage my own life. Yeah. Um, 
what I should do is an Instagram account for Pete because then it would just be Pete pictures all the time. It would be yep. amazing. But like that's another thing that I would then have to like log in and do and like nah. This is okay. one thing, to, another thing to add to your list for when you get an intern or, or an assistant. Um, yeah. That will be top priority. Yeah. So your job is to follow my cat around and take yeah. pictures of him doing cute things and then put it on the internet. The best thing is that Pete would be like verified on Twitter and like – you know, verified yeah. on YouTube or like whatever, whatever the things are, he would get there way faster than me. Yeah. Oh, he totally would. He totally you need would. to figure out how to get like a, not a GoPro. That's too big for Pete. Pete's a big, big guy, <gasps> but uh, some sort of Pete cam. I have a GoPro now. I can strap it to my cat. Oh God. <laughs> I think there are, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a GoPro yeah, mount for everything. So you got to figure out some sort of harness there, or I something. There's to get definitely for him, a harness. So. And I, I feel like I should point out that I'm like towards the bottom of this beer, which is why the idea of strapping a GoPro to my cat is making me excited. <laughs> um, That's awesome. So that yeah. means we're getting close to the end of the show. So we, we should. We've uh, gone so far off the rails starting no, from John we've, Glenn. We've, we've really maintained that <laughs> legendary, like we pulled it back to legendary somehow through different. <laughs> We did. We so, did. Yeah. Uh, are there any other musicians we should mention in our I know, I brief like legendary? Go... I mean, there are so many. We, I mean, we could go forever in all of these different topics of space and music and whatever with legends. But for right now, oh, I I want to just briefly mention um, Jim Heath from Reverend Horton Heat. Um, mm-hmm. And I know you recently saw them. You've seen them re- more recent than I have. But Jim Heath is somebody who's always stood out to me as as legendary in my mind in terms of guitar players. Um, I've always just kind of been in awe of what he does. So if you're mm-hmm. not familiar with Reverend Horton Heat, if you're watching this or listening to this show, you probably have at least heard of them. But um, they're they're uh, they describe they they fall under the genre of psychobilly, really, which is a combination of rockabilly and punk rock, basically. But um, they're a three-piece band, so they're guitar, bass, and drums. And the bass player, of course, plays upright bass. Jimbo is awesome. But um, Jim Heath, the guitar player, um, really does on the guitar what other bands do with at least two, sometimes three guitar players. He can manage to do all of these intricate parts and create that full sound by himself on the guitar. When I watch Reverend Horton Heat live, huh. my mouth and face hurt so much from just like either smiling the entire show or having my jaw on the floor the entire show. Yeah. Um, the greatest experience I had with Reverend Horton Heat, I've seen him so many times, but um, somehow, okay, I was working um, for uh, ASU um, when I was a student at ASU and my supervisor, one of my supervisors at uh, my job um, was also a bartender and he bartended at a, a club in Phoenix that doesn't exist anymore, actually Tempe. But he let me know that um, that night they were going to have this secret show and it was put on by um, a cigarette company. It was a secret cigarette show. Woo. Those things exist, <laughs> I guess. And he's all, all you've got to do is, you know, this isn't advertised at all. So all you have to do is show up at this time and they're going to have reps there. And these reps are going to come and ask you what brand you smoke. (laughs) And you mention the name of this company that's sponsoring the event and you'll get in. That's all. All right. This sounds awesome. I can do this. So by the way, not a smoker at all. (laughs) And... But sometimes you can lie for the sake of good music. I can. And, uh, you know, I, I will put out there that I don't turn down a, an occasional cigar with friends. So, but at the time, no real experience smoking. Um, and I'm in this line and everybody's smoking. And I'm with my best friend and we decide that we need to blend in. So we, ha- um, I don't know if we actually, I think we had cigarettes with us so we could pull out if we needed to. But uh, I had a lighter with me. I was prepared with a lighter. And a girl in front of me, like, turned around and asked if I could light her cigarette. Okay. So if this wasn't, if it wasn't obvious enough that I wasn't outside, like, dying and, like, not smoking with all these other people, um, I pulled out my lighter. And, you know, it was the 99 cent thing I bought at the grocery store before going to the show. Mm -hmm. I flicked the lighter and it was set to, like, high. So the flame is, like miles tall yep. <laughs> so i was 
torched her face off. It was hilarious. But yes, I made it very clear that I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but made it in the show just fine. Um, there That's were, what matters. There were maybe 50 people at this show. Really? Oh my 50 god! Fifty people, and they had like That's a food, awesome. they had a food buffet set up front, like right by the stage. They had people giving massages. Like it was the weirdest random what? show going on. I had no <laughs> idea what was so happening. Weird. But so like weird. you know, maybe fifteen to twenty people were like really into the show. Yeah. So like you know, I was like hard. front stage, like, just standing there watching the show, yeah. and you know, talk to Jimbo when he was in line for the buffet, and <laughs> it was totally <laughs> cool. But just like standing there in front of Jim Heath while he was yeah. playing guitar for this show, um, and not being like pushed in the back or whatever. And their shows usually aren't insane, but the worst that happens at their shows usually, or you get stuck behind a guy with a giant cowboy hat. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely um, I'm just I'm just trying to think back of like. When I saw them uh, a few months ago, they had a lot of guests come out. So there was like a hmm. full stage because there were all kinds of people like they played for like two and a half hours. Oh, because so that was like that other... was Horton's Hayride, right? Yeah. OK, yeah. so that so was, was a different like experience. I've never a experienced giant that. party. And like yeah. I, I got it was in Long Beach. Like I got stuck in traffic. I also got lost because it was like in a shipping yard wow. and I'm very bad at directions. And then the parking lot was full. I had to park like three miles away and then walk. And it's just like, what is happening right now? But it was in a parking lot. Um, with just food trucks everywhere. And like, I can't imagine anybody could ever go to a show like that and just not be dancing the entire time. Yeah. Like that's the best part. Yeah. I was just like, this is just so fun and happy. Yeah. It was so good. And I'm just like trying to, I'm just trying to think of like, yeah, how big the sound was with not that many people on stage. Cause I wasn't, I could, I didn't try to like push my way up super close. I was just sort of like enjoying kind of bouncing around in the back by myself. Yeah. I love him so yeah. much that, you know, one, awesome. one of one of my uh, dream purchases that, you know, I like buying toys and stuff. And one of my dream purchases that's always been on my list is he has a, a, a signature Gretsch guitar. And I've always wanted to get the Reverend Horton Heat, the Jim Heath yep. version Gretsch guitar. But certainly yeah. a trip to watch. Well, yeah. So I, I like that our takeaway message from this was that shows are awesome. <laughs> well, Yeah. We, yeah. Obviously. We are team, we are team obvious. Yay. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and speaking yep. of obvious, Amy, the beer is gone. I know, the beer is gone. I'm sad. So that unfortunately means that the show's over. That means our ranting is over. So, yeah. so fortunately for listeners, but bad for us, I guess. But... <laughs> well, we'll just have to do it again. Yeah, and again I think and so. Again, yep. Again, again, again. <laughs> That's a good plan. Yep. Uh-huh. Well, um,. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Hope you had as much fun as we did. Um, <laughs> if you have any uh, suggestions for topics you'd like us to discuss or beers you would like us to drink, feel free to send yeah. those our way. We always like those. Um, how let can you know. do that? Well, I was going to say, also, let us know because we're going to put this up on YouTube as well. Let us know yeah. in the comments who you would consider a legend of any of the topics that are this podcast your your music legends your space legend is your pet a legend and why i would like a story to qualify it um yeah i would definitely really like to that. hear that yeah i would like to hear that stuff too so yeah let us know that stuff in the comments and yeah of course things you should talk about, beers you should drink, all of that stuff. Um, yeah, if you would like to find more about each of us, I think the best place to find me is probably on Twitter for this uh, for this sake. Um, yeah, I am A-S-T, Vintage Space, and Jason, you are? I am Acentric. That's A-C-E-C-E-N-T-R-I-C. All right. Well, I think that's about it. Yep. Out Thanks. of beer, out of time. Thanks for hanging out, friends, and we'll do it again soon. Cheers. Cheers.